Sea of Thieves is facing a huge problem with how story content is delivered, and the longevity of seasons. It's episodic, and we always know what to expect. Once we've experienced the content in a season, that's it, it's over. Rare have tried to alleviate the lacklustre feeling by adding adventures and mysteries, but adventures are very unpopular at the moment and the mechanics often let the story down, and mysteries seem to be too far apart with lacklustre clues. We need a solution, and fast. We need to fill the gap that is left after seasonal content is over. While Season 8 was a huge step in the right direction, having content that actually lasts ages, combined with some proper endgame content by adding a big grind, I can't see future seasons being like that. The problem Sea of Thieves is facing currently is an issue that relates to immersion, speculation, and how content is delivered, which at the core involves how the story is delivered. The current ways they're progressing the lore is through adventures and some world building tied in with seasons. That's great, it really is, but to explain how we've got to the issue with Sea of Thieves in 2023, I have to tell you a story and let you into a bit of a secret. I am a sucker for the state Sea of Thieves was in back in 2018. Despite its low amount of content, times were different in many ways. To start, we of course had no idea about the story, where we were, what was coming, or what anything was about. This of course induced so much speculation. The Insider program was the Pioneer program and it wasn't public, therefore virtually no one knew what was coming in updates, which, speaking of, no one knew the content schedule. The updates were random and surprising. Sea of Thieves' official channel communicated a lot less on who, what, when, where, and why we are in the lore. It doesn't take a genius to see nowadays on every social platform, everything that goes on is generally plastered all over the place. The biggest part though, was because the game was incredibly lacklustre, there was no bar for what content should be added and what to expect. Every update surprised us like crazy, whatever they did was insane. It was a truly different era, and because during 2018 it was a new game, we didn't know what direction the developers would take or what could be possible. Another aspect of it, being a recent title, was the feeling of exploration which was further enhanced by a lack of communication, in a good way of course. Every update in Sea of Thieves gets a content update explaining in detail everything that's in it. When the game first released, did we have videos describing every aspect? No. When people first discovered the pirate legend hideout, it was a true surprise and a real secret. Especially as pirate legend was hard and rare to achieve back then. My point is with all this, we have lost the feeling of exploration and mystery. Back in 2018, I could hop on the sea, set sail, and go and explore. That was how it felt back then. Nothing can describe the feeling in 2019 experiencing the masterpiece of Shores of Gold, something that we've never got anything like. That final tale for the first time back then was a feeling of pure excitement, wonder, and speculation for what all was revealed could mean. The second we started getting regular updates, though, the feeling of exploration was lost completely. We knew what was coming and what to expect. See if these are Pirates Live surprised everyone, and it was the first time an update did it to the community since updates prior to anniversary. It was amazing to see, and we didn't know what to expect journeying to the Sunken Kingdom and the Sea of the Damned. However, even still the update was one of the worst with regards to longevity, and it's not like we can just pull a Pirates Live 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 every season to surprise the community, so how can we fix the issue? For that, I want to take a look at Elden Ring. For those who don't know, Elden Ring won Game of the Year 2022, and is a game we'll look back on that revolutionized single-player campaign games forever. I won't go into the premise, although I'd highly recommend checking it out if you haven't already, but one of the reasons why Elden Ring was such a big hit was because they managed to create one of the first truly living, breathing worlds. If we put the humongous map to the side, the way they achieved this was with side quests. In total, there are 36 extra quest lines. Now, to some of you, that may not sound like a lot, but the quests themselves are fully fleshed out to a degree that there's tons of new characters, mechanics, and places to explore. You get the gist. Okay. Sure, there's lots of content, but how does that make it a living world? 
The actions or inactions you take during your playthrough will influence quest lines, characters before, during and after quest lines who will show up in them, whether you can make characters friends or enemies, and much more. Your decision in one quest line could completely change your experience in another without you realizing. Equally, your decision to not do a quest line could also influence other side quests depending on how far through the game you play before you go back to a certain side quest. This is what keeps the game so engaging and alive. I want to give you a very small example of how side quests could be implemented into Sea of Thieves. Let's take Tina at New Golden Sands. One of her dialogue options talks about the necklace around her neck and how the tavern owners make them all wear it for brand recognition, but she sticks anything on it and if we can find something for her and we bring it to her, she'll be greatly thankful. So in Tina's questline, we'd have to go and find something for her to put on her necklace. After we do this, she talks about how a new inn over at Plunder Outpost is opening the Jolly Roger and we get invited to go with her and another tavern keeper. There we see for the first time NPCs walking around, parties going on, etc, etc. Because we're in questline mode, the outpost would look alive, a living, breathing world. But there we get taken aside by a mysterious pirate, who could tell us about one of their fleet going missing and send us to investigate with the promise of reward. This quest could lead to anything from battling a new sea monster to exploring new environments. You get the idea. Even if Sea of Thieves added just, say, 10 of these, even 5 maybe would spice up the game completely. This, of course, is only if the delivery is right. Sea of Thieves, by all means, could publicly announce this in a 3 minute cinematic trailer with a world is changing type thing. However, these quests would be embedded into the game and not shown how to do them or shown in gamers' beginner side quest. You only trigger the tall tale like mechanics after you complete the first step. In my example, this will be delivering her necklace piece. And she wouldn't tell you where you can find the piece either. You would have to just go and do it. Equally, you might find the necklace piece without even interacting with Tina ever. This is another part of Elden Ring that keeps it so exciting. Sea of Thieves could publish where to start the quest, but the actual content will be relatively secretive. Commendations would of course be added, but the sky is truly the limit with side quest lines. Some could be the size of adventures, others more like tall tales. They could introduce new environments, mechanics, enemies, characters, and everything that a season does in a cinematic way. They could sneak a new side quest in with random updates when people weren't expecting it. They could change the world with them. They could complement adventures. They're almost a compromise between tall tales and adventures. They would allow Sea of Thieves to really flesh out lots of different characters' lore and develop the deeper story. It would allow for speculation to thrive again as future updates, upcoming adventures, tall tales, and other future side quests could be teased. They could embed ideas for the future within them. Quest lines could interact with one another. You could have to make decisions in the side quests which would change the outcome. You could save your progress by a bookshelf on your ship detailing what you've done so far and objectives. However, to make the stories more engaging, as mentioned, it may not be clear what you have to do. Sea of Thieves have tried to do something like this, but on a much smaller scale, with a pirate's life having embedded secrets and tiny side quests. So if they upscaled that, it would be amazing. Back in 2018, the early updates like The Hunger and Deep felt like side quests. The mystery was also like a quest line. However, the actual clues were lackluster, too social media based, and it wasn't replayable. Who Killed DeMarco is the perfect example of a simple idea for a side quest, with a massive climax at the end in a cinematic way. Overall, I feel side quests would give Sea of Thieves a breath of fresh air and open up the possibility to imagining more than realistic expectations for future content, as well as making it feel like a living, breathing, thriving world, and not an episodic, come back for your monthly dose of lore filled game, whilst also creating longevity for seasonal content. That does to start bring us to the end of the video though, so let me know what you think of all this down in the comments below. Would you like to see side quests implemented, and do you think it would solve the problems that Sea of Thieves is currently facing? Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy them, please do consider leaving a like. It really helps out the channel an absolute ton, and subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest Sea of Thieves news as and when it comes out. My Reddit, why not hit the bell as well as do you miss a single upload? But anyways, apart from all that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.